In today's video, we're going to be talking about the concept of randomness. And more specifically, we'll be looking at how well humans are able to imitate randomness, and you'll get the chance to try out your skills as well. The idea for this project first came to me when I was reading the book Humble Pie by Matt Parker. You may recognize Matt from his many appearances on the YouTube channel Numberphile, or his own channel called Stand Up Maths. In his book, there's an entire chapter on randomness, and one of my favorite stories describes a homework assignment that Matt used during his time as a high school math teacher. He would ask his students to go home and flip a coin a hundred times, recording the sequence of flips as they went. The next day, when the students turned in their homework, Matt assumed that there would be some students that actually completed the assignment and flipped the coin a hundred times, while there would be others that would try to cheat the assignment by simply writing down a sequence of coin flips that seemed random to them, without ever touching an actual coin. Matt would then try to determine if a student's sequence of coin flips truly came from a coin, or if they had just made up the sequence in order to get the assignment done faster. He found that the students that faked the assignment usually did a decent job at having approximately the same number of heads as tails, but there was another characteristic of the coin flips that they were much worse at replicating. Matt looked at each sequence and would find the longest streak of the same side of the coin appearing in a row. For example, in this string of 20 coin flips, the longest streak would be these five tails that appear in a row. Now, if you were to look at the longest streak that appeared in truly random sequences of 100 flips, here's what the distribution would look like. We can see that most of the longest streaks fall in the range of 4 to 7 flips, and over 50% of the longest streaks were 6 flips in a row or greater. However, when faking a sequence of coin flips, people tend to be more hesitant to write down long streaks, thinking that it will seem unrealistic. For example, if you were to come across a sequence of coin flips from a student whose longest streak was only 3, you would have good evidence that this student made up their coin flips, since this should happen less than 2% of the time. Now you couldn't be absolutely certain that they made up their coin flips, but you would definitely be suspicious given that it's such a low probability. This story of Matt's homework assignment inspired me to create my own fake randomness detector. This can be difficult since all possible sequences of coin flips of the same length are equally likely to occur if they're truly random, but I hope to find some specific patterns that stand out when people try to fake randomness. I wanted to create a program that would take in a sequence of coin flips and look at various characteristics, such as the longest streak or the number of heads, to predict whether the set of coin flips was truly random or if it was created by a person. Then I wanted to make a website where people can try to beat this randomness detector by testing their own sequences of coin flips. The first step here was data collection. I needed to have both truly random sequences and sequences that were made up by a person. The truly random sequences are the easy part. There's a function called choices from the random library in Python that's able to choose a random element from a string or a list. For example, if we pass in an H and a T into this function, it will choose a random letter each time that we run the code. We can then pass in a parameter K, which tells the function how many times we want to draw a random letter. In our case, we're going to use a K value of 50. Then we're going to join all these choices together. So now we can get a random sequence of coin flips each time that we run this code. Lastly, we can just repeat this process a bunch of times to get us 10,000 simulated sequences in under a second. This is where learning to program is extremely helpful, so that we don't have to actually flip a coin hundreds of thousands of times to get this data. I actually just finished a free intro to programming course that teaches you the basics of coding in Python, so I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in checking that out. So we figured out how to get the truly random sequences, but now we're going to need a way to get sequences that were created by actual people. A couple of months ago, I posted a link to this survey, asking my subscribers to come up with sequences of 50 coin flips that they thought could pass as random. From this survey, I collected a total of 280 sequences that I'm trusting were made up by real people. I also made up some of my own sequences and collected some from friends, bringing the total count to 376. So now that the data has been collected, it's time to start building the model that will try to distinguish a truly random sequence from one made up by a person. I wanted to create a bunch of metrics to describe the sequences of coin flips, such as the longest streak characteristic that we saw earlier. I ended up coming up with 31 of these metrics, which I hoped would be enough to make this model decently accurate. Here's a couple of the metrics that I came up with. There were some simple ones, such as the number of heads, the longest run that occurred, or the number of times that a sequence like heads heads appeared. Then I tried to come up with some that people would pay less attention to while creating their sequence of flips. These included things such as the variance of the run lengths or the number of mirrored runs that occurred. I defined a mirrored run as a situation where a streak of either heads or tails is followed by a streak of the opposite side, 
where both streaks have the same exact length. For example, here we can see that there's a run of three tails, directly followed by a run of three heads. I included this metric because I thought that people might try to balance out the number of heads and tails after creating a large run of a certain side. So now that we've created all the metrics, we have to decide on the model we're going to use to predict if a sequence is actually random or if it was created by a human. I decided to go with what's known as a random forest model, which is a collection of decision trees. Each decision tree is a flowchart of rules that attempts to classify the sequence as truly random or human-generated based on the set of data that's shown to the model. For example, a decision tree can look at a sequence of flips and decide that if there are more than 30 heads and the longest run is less than 4, it'll predict that the sequence was created by a human, since that's what it saw in the data that it was trained on. Now in reality, the decision trees are much more complex than this, with many more branches, but this is the general idea of how they work. I decided to set the number of decision trees in the random forest model to be a thousand. This means that a thousand different decision trees will come up with a prediction about a sequence of coin flips. If 200 of these decision trees predict that a sequence is truly random, while the other 800 predict that it was created by a human, the overall model will predict that the sequence was made by a person, since 80% of the decision trees landed on this answer. I used 75% of the data I collected to train the model, and I saved the remaining 25% of the data to test the model on coin flips that it's never seen before. The model had performed extremely well on the data that was used to train it, but it's the data that it hasn't seen yet that's the most important. On the unseen data, when the model was given a sequence of coin flips that was made by a person, it was able to correctly identify it 78% of the time. When the model was given coin flips that were generated by a computer, it could correctly identify these 78% of the time as well. These results were very promising to see, since the model was much better than random guessing at determining how the coin flips were generated. This most likely means that there are some large differences between the truly random flips and the human-made flips when looking at the metrics that we used in the model. Here were some of the largest differences that I found. First, let's take a look at the number of runs in a sequence of coin flips for each group. A run here is just a section of flips where the same side of the coin shows up in a row. For example, in the sequence below, there would be six runs. In this graph, the blue shows the distribution of the number of runs for the computer-generated sequences, and the orange shows the distribution for the ones made by people. We can see that the human-made sequences tend to have more runs in their set of 50 flips. So if we come across a sequence of coin flips that has more than 35 runs, we can be pretty confident that this is a run that was made by a person, since the odds of this happening for a randomly generated sequence are so low. The higher number of runs for human-generated sequences makes sense when we look at the comparison in the mean run lengths. We can see that people tend to keep their runs shorter than what actually occurs in random sequences. This also means that people are less likely to have streaks of things like three tails in a row, and are more likely to have streaks such as heads, tails, heads, as shown in these two graphs here. The last metric that I wanted to show was the mirrored runs that we talked about earlier. We can see that human-made sequences contain a larger amount of these mirrored runs compared to the randomly generated sequences. I didn't want to just show off this experiment without letting you guys try it out for yourselves. So I created a web application where you can see if you can fool the same model that was built in this video. You can try it out for yourself at howrandomareyou.mindingthedata.com which I'll leave a link to in the description. On the site, you'll have the option to either type in your own sequence of coin flips, or you can click this button here to have a random sequence generated for you. Let's first check a randomly generated sequence. We can see here that the model correctly identifies that it was computer generated. Now let's try a string that I came up with myself. The model correctly identifies that it was human generated, and at the bottom here, it will even show me where my sequence differed the most from truly random sequences. In this case, the number of runs of length 1 was way higher than what we should have seen in a truly random sequence. Now keep in mind that this model isn't perfect, but it should still get around 80% of its guesses correct. And hopefully, you've learned about some of the key metrics that the model uses, so you should have even better chances of beating this model. But that's it for this video. If you're interested in learning the basics of programming, go check out my new course that I'll have linked in the description. It's completely free and contains about 2 hours worth of material which should set you up with the basics of programming for you to explore your own interests afterwards, whether that be data visualization, web applications, or machine learning models. Thanks so much for making it to the end, and I'll see you in the next video.